What is happening guys? Welcome back. So if you can hear a bit of noise in the background, it is blowing an absolute gale outside and it's hammering it down. Um, so apologies for a little bit of background noise. It's Monday morning, yesterday on Sunday, um, you guys all watched the unveiling of the Polo, the Polo build. Um, thank you all so much for watching. It's gone down really, really well. You all seem as excited as I do about it. Um, and it's doing what I wanted it to do. And it seems to be um, quite nostalgic with a lot of people. I've had loads of people messaging me saying they had one when they were younger, they've had bread vans, they've had a few, their friends have had them, they remember the mum or their aunt had one. So yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to bring a little bit of nostalgia back to it. And remember these, what I think are underrated little cars. And as they're referred to, the baby golf. Um, so yeah, plenty to do with it. As you can probably see in the background, I came out yesterday and made a start on decorating the place. So, by decorating, putting some banners up. So we've got some banners up on the wall around there. Just a few of the people, the companies that have helped us out and sort of sponsored the channel over the time. We've got the award up on the wall. I need to build a shelf for the other award for the, for the Mark 1s, the awards that we won with the Mark 1s, and I'm gonna get a banner, a poster made with that on it. And we've also managed to finally get the 100,000 subscriber plaque up on the wall, which, yeah, that really did make it feel a little bit more like mine yesterday, which was an amazing feeling. So thank you all so much for watching and allowing us to get that plaque and have it on the wall. But anyway, the Polo Project. So I am absolutely soaking. I've been outside with the car this morning in the rain. Um, we've degreased it and pressure washed all the engine bay off. So we've got a lot of the dirt, grime and everything out of there. Um, and thankfully it's not really uncovered much more than we already knew. So what my plan for now is going to be, I think, we'll get the doors and the boot off. Uh, I think we'll then put it on the lift. We'll get all the suspension off and everything off from underneath the fuel tank and everything out. And then I've been having a look and we're going to make some adapting brackets for the Mark 1 rollover jig. And we're going to put this on the rollover jig just to make life a little bit easier with getting all the undersealer off because I really want to get everything off underneath so we know that we're getting all the rust out of the car. So that's the job for now. We'll time lapse that and you'll see me in a bit when we've got all those bits off. Not that there was a lot left of it, but we've got everything else off, suspension's all off. I can't undo the top of these at the minute, they're damaged and I really need to leave the suspension on to try and work out what we're gonna be doing with uh, the rest of it. So I've just undone the top nut and taken the hubs and the bottom of it because the bottom of the strut is all one piece with the hub. Um, we've took that off and left the damper on the car because I just wanted to get as much weight off as we can. A little bit of weight there, it's not really the problem, not really an issue. Um, Doors are off, tailgate's obviously all off. Um, fuel tank, we got that out, got that on the floor as well. Um, and thankfully, underneath is no worse where the fuel tank and everything was than we first thought it was. So, what I'm jumping onto now is uh, we want to get it onto the rollover jig. So, I bought a rollover jig when we did the Mark 1 Golf, um, and it made welding the car so much easier. I don't know or how or why people would want to weld cars without one. They're really not a lot of money. They're a great bit of kit. It's not sponsored, um, but yeah, I think it was rolloverjigs.com. Um, great bit of kit, really, really good bit of kit. So we had that one for the Mark 1, and we had these brackets here. So you have the rollover part, or the, the, the pivot part, and you've got this. So what this basically did, 
this bar and this bar pushed in where the bumper mounted and you bolted through um, and that held the car and um, yeah, you rolled it over. Same at the front, same at the back. This car, the bumpers bolt on a little differently. So the bumpers bolt on through that hole, which just comes straight out and that hole there, which just comes straight out. So I have made some little bits and modified the bracket to fit this car. I did speak to Rollover Jig. They said they could make me some, but I wasn't sure how long it was going to take and I wanted to get on with this. So what I've done is, you can see there, you've got a bit of flat plate, a bit of tube, a bit of flat plate and one big long bolt that bolts through into there. And that is absolutely solid. And you can pick the old car up. It's absolutely solid, not going anywhere. They pulled it off the lift. Exactly what we wanted. So we need to modify the rear one now. The front one was nice and easy because the holes from for the bumper on this are narrower than they were on the Mark 1 Golf. So that was nice and easy. But the actual bar itself is shorter than, where have I done my tape measure? Than the holes in the back. So I've just measured the back panel and those holes are 1.2 meters center to center. And this bar here is, I don't know what this is, 1100. So we're 100 mil shy. So all I'm gonna do, I've got another bit of this five mil flat bar. We're gonna cut some long pieces. We'll cut another bit of tube in a plate and we'll have a little leg off, two holes, that will bolt into this, one hole that will bolt into the car. Hopefully, it's going to work. So, time lapse on. We haven't quite got the weight balance right yet, but it rolls over. We've got full access to all of this lot. All the welding will be easy. We can clear all the underseal off nice and easily. Um, yeah, we've got full access and full vision at everything. It makes life a bit easier. So, what I want to make a start on now is getting all of the underseal off the car to just check that all the metal's okay. We want to get it off and we want to redo it. So, this as you can see, I've made a start already on it. And OG viewers from the Mark 1, or people that have watched the Mark 1 series, will see that I did it with a scraper, an old wood chisel, and a heat gun, which works and it does a job. It's the way that everyone's done it for however long. Um, I saw this a while ago and thought we'll try it on the next one. And then someone commented on a video the other day and said it as well. And that is a multi tool, so an oscillating multi tool. So that vibrates back and forth. It's just got a sort of slicing blade on it and a fresh bit here. Hopefully you could just see that, my dodgy camera skill is trying to hold the camera and do it at the same time. But it basically, yeah, it cuts back and forth and it slices through all the under seal or whatever to get down to the primed or the primer base, which is what we need to get down to. So I've been and got my headphones are charged up. We'll bang a podcast or some music on or something, get her head down and get all of this lot off and get the underside clear so you can see if there's any more rust.
Good morning, guys. So, the progress so far. We have got this front wheel arch is now all stripped back to bare metal and actually not looking too bad. The damage down here is what we knew. The damage up on the A pillar is what we knew, but everything else it seems okay. Floors are stripped, apart from for some reason I've not done that bit, but floors are stripped front to back. And again, we're looking pretty good. There's not really a lot of damage. The ends are a little bit bent, but the metal's looking solid. So we should be able to salvage that bit with a, a new outer seal, fix this front area, we should be okay. And then, oh yeah, and we've started sorting out the rear arch and got a bit of that off. And then, if you remember back to the last video, there was a patch inside that I wasn't overly happy about um, and wanted to remove. Turns out that was a good call because the majority of it was filler on this side. This is the seatbelt anchoring point just here. The metal wasn't touching it, that had just got filler bridging the gap to make it look like that panel. And as you can see, this area is not looking the best. So we've got this little bit of rock round here coming round. We've started cutting bits away the it, this back part of the inner. So we shouldn't be too bad. It's pretty much a flat piece. This inner piece here needs sorting out. Obviously, we knew we needed the outer, but it turns out that we could do with the sort of rear wheel tubs, or at least part of them. The outer part of the arch has gone as well. And at the back here, again, we've got damage to the rear panel. This bit's all rotted out. Wheel arch tubs all rotted out. Same on the other side. We've been doing a bit more poking and prodding. And then at the front, again, we are in pretty much a similar... We've got a bit of a similar problem. Arch has gone a bit further around up there. So a little bit disheartening yesterday to find that. I mean, we knew we were going to find more damage. We knew it wasn't going to be the fairy tale build that we thought it was going to be when we first saw the car because they're always worse than you think. It should all be fixable, it should all be salvageable and sortable. And that is what we're doing this morning. So, a bit frantic last night on the internet because you can't buy these parts new. Um, trying to find body cuts and whatever. I had a few people reply. Thank you very much. We've got one guy on Saturday who's got a full shell um, that he can do cuts from, um, but he's got to get it out of storage at work in the week. Um, so, we said we're going to talk at the weekend and sort of said, if we can sort anything else out, then I might, or we'll come and see you at the weekend. Spoke to another guy last night who breaks polos. He's got both rear, basically just cuts, the full the rear quarter, full rear quarters um, and everything. So hopefully we're going to go and have a look at them this morning. If they're no good, we won't get them. We'll speak to the other guy because he said his shell is really good. But if these ones are okay, we can get them. And it means we can actually get on with making a start on sorting this rear end out. So van is now unloaded and... The workshop is full of more rubbish. So we're going to jump in, take a drive over there and sort that out. And then we've got to drive over to another place to go and pick the engine up. First stop done, we've been to a place in Cambridgeshire that breaks Mark 2, Mark 3 polos and we have got two rear quarter cups, so there's quite a lot on them, there's more than I thought would be on them, so hopefully that's going to allow us to uh, do all of the repairing to both rear arches and hopefully get them nice and solid again. So we are now driving another 100 and I think it's 120 miles from Cambridgeshire over to Etoxeter to collect the engine for the car and very nicely I've put in my sat nav to take me a different way the sat nav has decided that it wants to basically take me past my front door to get to your top stop which is great so yeah a bit more driving and I'll catch up with you when we hopefully have got the engine and are headed back home and you never know we might even be able to actually get some more stuff done this afternoon Right, 
made it back to the unit. May have had a nap when I got back, but we're out in the unit now. And the things that we bought are cut there and a cut there, rear of two cars, tailgate just there, which is it's in better condition than the one that we took off. So that's a bonus. Glasses around the back, that don't matter, and some suspension stuff that's down there. But what we need to focus on now is how we're going to get the parts off of this that we need. Now, when I first got it, I thought, brilliant, great, we can use the arch, we can use everything, we can put basically put a new rear quarter on it as well. Um, but looking at it, I don't think we're going to be able to. We're going to have to sacrifice the outside of that cut that we've bought to get the bits off it that we need. So, yeah, looking in here, we want this inner arch tub, this outer part of the inner arch tub, and potentially some of this sort of section around here, uh, outer tub at the back. And then we may be able to use, if we could cut that, in choice places we may then be able to piece bits back in to rebuild this back corner so the only real thing i can do is get the grinder out and just start cutting and see what happens see where we get to and see if we can get the bits off that we need without wrecking them And a few days later, so we set about cutting up the rear cuts, the body cuts that we got. Um, someone's obviously just sent the saw through the uh, B and C pillar, through the sill, and then along the floor. That's what we started with. And after I think in total I worked out it was about twelve hours to twelve to fourteen hours. What we've ended up with is some puzzle pieces on the floor. So we've managed to get these off. They're not in perfect condition. They do need a little bit of knocking about and tidying up when we get to put them on the car, but we have nevertheless got the panels. So we've got the inner part of the wheel arch, which has got the strut tower on it. We've got the outer part of the wheel arch, and then this bit down here, which is rotted out on the car, which you can see I've done a little bit of repair work. That part's been replaced as well, because they're known for going. That is now pretty much back solid. We've got the seat. The rear seat corner, where that little bit's rotted out just there, part of that will be used to replace that. Outer rear corner, rear panel sort of corner, and we've also got the chassis leg as well. Because part of that has rotted out um, on the car, as you can see. So we've got to replace some of this chassis leg or the whole piece down to this join. Um, we've got that piece there is the um no big pardon that piece there what piece is that no that piece there is the outer piece so that's all one piece we've got the inner piece there and then we've got the lower corner for there and the lower piece for there so oh and then the seat bit is the bit that's in here that's sort of right out of here so what we're going to do now is try and get cut all of this area out and we've got to try and do it without damaging the rear quarter we can do the arch we're gonna to have to cut part of the arch outer arch off because we can replace them but we need to do it without damaging the rest of the quarter because i don't want to be replacing that so i'll try and put the gopro on and time lapse a bit of it um it's getting close to the end of the week so i'm not sure how much we're going to get done um but we shall nevertheless make a start it's going to look a bit crude but we're just going to hack away get as much of it out as we can and then decide where we're going to cut those and how they're going to go back in
And there we go. Our time in the workshop this week is very nearly done. Um, I need to go in now and edit this video for you to watch in the morning. Uh, so we'll have a quick roundup of what we've done. I didn't really feel like I'd done a lot. We were out with friends last night, so I've not really achieved a lot this week. It's one of them weeks where I just, I don't feel like I've done a lot, but I suppose we have really. We got the car stripped and then mounted up onto the roll up jig, which makes life a hell of a lot easier. And I'm, yeah, glad we could get it on um, just to make welding access, all of that easier. You're not welding underneath and everything. We went and picked up all the body cuts um, and the other parts that we collected. We managed to dissect the driver's side and get the parts off that we want and cleaned up. We got all the underseal off, or most of the underseal off the underside of the car. And we have also cut a rather large hole in the car, eh, trying to get rid of all the rot and the rust, and I've still got to keep going, still not enough, um, to then get all of the new metal in. I've decided to cut the, I've taken the complete chassis leg off from the front of the rear seats all the way to the, the back end of the car. We managed to get the other one off the body cut in one piece and it's really solid. So we figured instead of just cutting it and replacing the beam mount, we'll just put the whole chassis leg on and that way we know it's nice, it's right, it's solid. We did it on the Mark 1, so as long as it's welding all right, we will be okay. Talking of that, I made myself a jig down here. So we've got the original mounting points for the pivot on the rear beam. We we'll removed those, we've welded a bar in between and then we've got two other positive mounting locations onto the chassis of the car that are not coming off. So we know that the rear beam is gonna go into exactly the same place when we put the new chassis leg on, um, just to eliminate any movement or anything. Um, but yeah, as I say, we need to get in the house now and edit this video. Um, I'm going out tonight, so I've got to get this all done a bit quicker, ready for you guys to watch. In the morning, I want to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone that has watched the channel, full stop. But the first episode on this new project, everyone seems pretty excited. And it's doing what I wanted it to, which is a bit nostalgic. And my friend had one, I've had one, I've had a few. I remember them from back in the day. It's done what I wanted it to do. There are underrate understated underrated car um that everyone i think has got some sort of an association with so it seems like a good idea it's a bit more of an involved project than i thought it was going to be but we will get there with it it will be fine it will be okay um quite a lot of people um suggested we're giving engine suggestions and stuff which is amazing thank you all so much uh we can't 20 valve it we can't r32 it we can't r36 it we can't abf it because they're all big block and they will not fit in that engine bay it needs to be what is referred to as a small block so 1.6 or less um g4 has been suggested be great but i think that would blow too much of the budget as well um also a few people have said why don't you get the car sandblasted why don't you get the car dipped again budget wise that is just going to completely blow the budget out of the water I remember from now or a few days ago until this car being finished in a show field we're trying to do it for less than five grand so yeah we've got to be mindful of what's what because when we put an engine in it little bits and bobs do add up um, and end up costing a fortune so thank you all so much for watching um hopefully you've enjoyed it in the next one we'll carry on try and get all of that side welded up and move on i'm being mindful i don't want the welding to drag on like it did with the mark one i really want to get it done as quick as i can because it's no fun watching 20 odd episodes of welding so, until next time, guys, enjoy.